My name is Captain Chad Peltier. I'm a board recorder with the Department of the Army Secretariat for Selection Boards and I will be your trainer today. This training will cover the active component officer selection board process. At some point in your career you have been or will be considered by a DA centralized selection board. This training will give you the information you need to be successful in preparing for your next board. This is the outline I will follow. I will first highlight what a DA selection board is, types of selection boards, and how they work. Then I will highlight what you can do to prepare for your next board and the importance of evaluations. Lastly, you will have an opportunity to vote in mock files as if you were serving as a board member. First and foremost, what is a DA selection board? A headquarters department of the Army selection board is a process that requires senior leaders to consider and recommend officers for selection. Senior leaders are appointed by the Secretary of the Army or the Chief of Staff of the Army to serve on a special duty assignment as a board member. Officers travel to the Department of the Army Secretariat for Selection Boards located at HRC Fort Knox, Kentucky to execute their board member duties. Board members are provided guidance and a board mission to select officers to meet the needs of the Army. Example board missions include promotion, separation, school, or command selection. Board membership composition is prescribed by Title 10 U.S. Code, Army Regulation, and Army G1 Policy. Board members must be senior to those officers considered and appropriately represent officers' components, branch, joint experience, ethnicity, and gender. Army policy dictates that board members must be a lieutenant colonel or higher for officer boards. Additionally, board members are required to have successful careers with on-time promotion and or CSL selection, as well as no derogatory performance. Lastly, U.S. law requires at least five board members. However, depending on the board's mission, there can be up to 22. The board receives its guidance in the form of the Memorandum of Instruction, or MOI. Members are not allowed to discuss files or share their individual voter philosophies. They must decide for themselves how to score each officer. The important thing to take away from this slide is that everyone in the considered population is adequately represented and board members are strictly prohibited from communicating about officers' files. Due to these strict guidelines, board members convey 100% faith and confidence in the board process. We'll now take a quick look at the Officer Selection Board types. The DA Secretariat executes over 90 centralized selection boards a year for officers and non-commissioned officers in active and reserve components. Many active component officer boards are governed by law and include all promotion boards for Chief Warrant Officer 3 through Major General, and all special boards, including special selection boards, promotion review boards, and command review boards. Special selection boards convene as a result of officer omission from the original board or to reconsider officers who are not selected based on a material error. Promotion and command review boards convene to determine if selected officers should remain on standing selection lists. Law also governs all drawdown boards. The officer separation and enhanced selective early retirement boards consider captains and majors. The selective early retirement boards consider lieutenant colonels and colonels. Some boards are governed by policy, including school boards, such as Command and General Staff College and Senior Service College boards. Policy boards also include battalion and brigade command and key billet centralized selection lists and reserve officer training corps professor of military science boards. Now let's talk about the MOI. As stated earlier, the board receives its guidance in the form of the Memorandum of Instruction, or MOI. The MOI's framework is a synthesis and interpretation of multiple inputs including U.S. law, DOD policy, Army regulation, and current senior Army leadership guidance. Its content may vary as the Army's structure, strategy, procedures, and demands continuously evolve. The MOI is personally signed by the authority for the board. This is the Secretary of the Army for Promotion, Drawdown, and Senior Service College Boards, or the Chief of Staff of the Army for CSL and CGSC Boards. The MOI is divided into two parts. The first part contains guidance on qualities the board should consider when reviewing each officer's file, such as character, diversity, education, and assignments. The second part contains administrative instructions such as zones of consideration, selection objectives, and board procedures. It's important to note that the MOI does not prioritize or weight qualities for consideration. Board members are instructed to review officers' files holistically. Now that you know what a board is, it's time to discuss what a board file is. The board file is comprised of the following information. If applicable, correspondence to the board president will always appear first. Examples of correspondence may be an individual officer's letter to the board president or a retirements and separations memorandum. 
The DA photo will appear next only if the officer has an official photo on file within five years of the board's convene date. No photo will appear if there is no Datmus photo on record within five years. We'll discuss the DA photo in more detail later in this training. Next is the officer record brief, followed by the performance section of the Army Military Human Resource Record, which is pulled directly from IPERMS. For the remainder of this training, we will refer to the Human Resource Record as the official record. The evaluation section of the performance record appears first and includes all evaluations, OERs, and AERs listed chronologically with the most recent appearing first. The education and training and commendatory portions of the official record are listed next. If the officer has disciplinary information, for example, a general officer memorandum of reprimand, it will appear at the bottom of the official record. The disciplinary folder does not include referred OERs. Currently, some boards also view the restricted and adverse portions of the official record. The restricted portion will only appear if authorized and directed, and MILPR messages will specify if it is visible to the board. For example, portions of the restricted file are visible to separation boards. Adverse information only appears for general officer boards. Officers are screened for adverse information by multiple agencies, and only findings that are relevant and substantiated will appear before the board. Officers in the considered population have the opportunity to view, correct, and certify their own board file using the My Board File application on the HRC website. Failing to view, correct, or certify the board file does not prevent board members from viewing its content. Additionally, certifying the board file does not prevent the official record from changing prior to the convene date. If new documents are posted to the official record after the board file is certified and prior to the board convene date, those documents will be seen by the board. Now that you know what a board file is, let's discuss the board member individual voter philosophy. In order to successfully vote the entire population free of prejudice or partiality and remain consistent throughout all voting, board members develop an individual voter philosophy. An individual voter philosophy is a board member's consistent application of the MOI, their experience and judgment, and the word picture as he or she assesses the content of each board file and subsequently applies a score. Again, board members must decide for themselves without discussing with each other what they consider a high score versus a low score. We will discuss board operations on the next slide. The last note on this slide is that board members are given a practice vote prior to record voting to ensure they feel comfortable with the voting process. Board execution is determined by the board's mission, zones of consideration, and needs of the Army. For the purpose of this training, we will demonstrate how a promotion selection board is executed for Chief Warrant Officer 5 and Major through Colonel ranks. For these promotion selection boards, there are four phases to the operation. The board will execute all phases of the operation for each competitive category. Keep in mind, all board members vote all officers, regardless of the members or considered officers branch. However, each competitive category of operations, operation support, and force sustainment are voted separately. For example, operations branches compete for needs of the Army requirements from the operations competitive category, but do not compete for requirements from the operations support or force sustainment. We will discuss more about needs of the Army requirements later. In Phase 1, the Board will identify fully qualified officers. Board members vote in and above zone officers using a 1 through 6 plus voting scale. We call this a hard vote word picture. On the left is a numerical scale of 1 through 6 plus or minus. The plus and minus identifiers can be used to increase the total number of possible scores an officer can receive. For example, a score of 5 is higher than a 5 minus, which is higher than a 4 plus, and so on. As you can see, the score of 1 denotes show cause consideration. We'll discuss the show cause process in Phase 4. The fully qualified line serves to separate those officers that should not be selected based on performance. Keep in mind, one board member may score an officer a 3, and another board member could score the same officer a 6+. plus. But no one can tell board members how to vote, and no one can force a board member to change their score. Each board member's vote is weighted equally. After all in and above zone voting is complete, the automated system totals the scores for each officer and produces an order of merit list, or OML. The OML will be used to identify fully qualified officers, and later in Phase 3 to identify the best qualified officers to meet the needs of the Army. Let's take a look at an example OML. 
This is a fictitious OML from the Operations Competitive category. In this example, there are 17 board members. The highest score an officer can receive is 102 plus 17. That is, all 17 board members applying a score of 6 plus. 6 times 17 equals 102, and 17 pluses add up to plus 17. The lowest score an officer can receive is 17. That is, all 17 board members applying a score of 1, or consideration for show cause. In this example, the board drew the fully qualified line between 2 and 3 on the word picture. Therefore, the lowest score an officer can receive and still be fully qualified is 51 minus 17. That is, the average board member score of 3 minus. Officers below this line are not fully qualified and cannot be recommended for promotion regardless of promotion opportunity. Now that we have an example in and above zone OML, let's move into phase 2. In phase 2, the board will identify potential below the zone selects. I will refer to below the zone as BZ for the remainder of this training. In accordance with Army regulation, BZ promotions are an essential part of the promotion system. They are intended to provide officers of exceptional ability an opportunity to advance quickly, to help the Army retain high quality officers, and give officers an incentive to perform at their highest potential. Officers selected from BZ replace those who would otherwise be promoted from in and above the promotion zone. Therefore, they must be clearly superior to those who would otherwise be promoted. Officers in the BZ considered population are voted separately. Board members quickly assess files to determine if an officer in the BZ population merits further consideration for accelerated promotion. In order to quickly assess files, a simple yes, no, or show cause screen vote word picture is used. Simply put, a yes means the officer merits further consideration. No means they do not. Board members also have the opportunity to recommend officers for show cause consideration. Once the screen vote is complete, the board will review a chart similar to this, depicting how many officers received each possible number of yes votes from 17 to 0. It's important to note that this chart only depicts the number of officers and corresponding yes votes. The board does not know officers' names, branches, ethnicity, or gender when deciding how many to hard vote. In this example, one officer received 17 yes votes for a running total of 1. Zero officers received 16 yes votes, two officers received 15 yes votes for a running total of 3, and so on, all the way to the total number of BZ officers screen voted, which in this example is 15. The board will deliberate and decide by majority vote how many files to hard vote. The board considers the maximum BZ selection opportunity as defined in the MOI. In this example, the maximum selection is 3 and the board decided to send 10 officers to a hard vote. That is, all officers receiving 14 or more yes votes. Again, this is a board decision and each promotion board may decide differently. The next step in this phase is to hard vote the BZ files. The board will hard vote the 10 officers using a 2 through 6 plus hard vote word picture similar to this. Graphically depicted, the board decided to send all officers with 14 or more yes votes to the hard vote. Once the hard vote is complete, the automated system will generate an OML. Per the MOI, the BZ maximum selection opportunity is 3. Therefore, the top 3 officers on the BZ hard vote OML will be used for BZ comparison in the next phase. And that brings us to phase 3, where the board identifies the best qualified officers to meet the needs of the Army. The first step in phase 3 is to establish a tentatively best qualified or TBQ line on the in and above zone OML. The TBQ line is determined by the optimum selection opportunity as defined in the board's MOI. In this example, the board's optimum selection opportunity is 8 officers. The TBQ line is then drawn between OML positions 8 and 9 on the in and above zone OML. The TBQ line serves to identify the in and above zone comparison group for the BZ comparison process, which is the next step in Phase 3. Remember the definition of Phase 3 that I highlighted earlier. Officers selected from BC replace those who would otherwise be promoted from in and above the promotion zone. Therefore, they must be clearly superior to those who would otherwise be promoted. In order to determine if BZ officers are clearly superior, the board must execute a BZ comparison process. The process will compare the in and above zone officers directly above the TBQ line 
to the BZ officers from the BZ Hard Vote OML. The board will only compare the BZ maximum selection opportunity as defined in the MOI. Remember, in this example, the BZ maximum selection opportunity is 3. Therefore, the officers at BZ OML positions 1 through 3 are compared to the three officers directly above the TBQ line on the in and above zone OML. In this example, officers at OML positions 6 through 8 are the in and above zone comparison group. Now we have our two comparison groups, in and above zone OML positions 6 through 8 versus BZ OML positions 1 through 3. The BZ OML is inverted to allow the board to compare the lowest scoring BZ officer against the highest scoring officer from the in and above zone comparison group. In this example, the officer at in and above zone OML position 6 will be compared against the officer at BZ OML position 3. Board members review both officers simultaneously and cast a vote of yes, the BZ officer is clearly superior, or no, the BZ officer is not clearly superior. By majority vote, if the lowest scoring BZ officer is found to be clearly superior to the highest scoring in and above zone officer, then all BZ officers scoring higher on the BZ OML are also found to be clearly superior. Remember, the board has already decided through voting that the officer at OML position 6 is better than the officers at OML position 7 and 8. So it stands to reason that if the BZ officer at position 3 is clearly superior to the in and above zone officer at position 6, then the BZ officers at OML positions 1 and 2 are also clearly superior. The BZ officers are administratively placed at the top of the in and above zone OML for the purpose of filling requirements. If by majority of the board, the BZ officer at OML position 3 is not found to be clearly superior, then the board will compare the next two officers at BZ OML position 2 and in and above zone OML position 7. The board will continue this process until a BZ officer is found to be clearly superior or until the BZ OML is exhausted. Before we move on to the next step, it is important to note that it is the board's discretion to fulfill BZ opportunity. Some boards may find 0, 1, or 15 officers to be clearly superior. Although the MOI specifies a maximum opportunity for BZ selection, the board has a mission to recommend the best qualified officers, and therefore is not obligated to fulfill the BZ promotion opportunity. Now that we've completed the BZ comparison process, the next step is to fill requirements. The board's MOI will specify selection requirements for each competitive category and possibly for specific branches, functional areas, or skills. In this example, we have the in and above zone OML from 1 through 17. The example MOI specifies an optimum selection of 8, a maximum selection of 11, and maximum BZ opportunity of 3. Also in this example are specific branch requirements for Aviation, Engineer, and Functional Area 30, leaving an at-large selection of 5 officers from the Operations Competitive category. In Phase 1, we drew the fully qualified line at a score of 51-17, or OML position 14. Officers below this line are not fully qualified and may not be used to meet the needs of the Army. In Phase 3, we drew the tentatively best qualified line at OML position 8, based on the optimum selection of 8. In this example, the majority of the board found all three BZ officers to be clearly superior. The three BZ officers are administratively placed at the top of the OML to ensure they fill a requirement. Next, we will fill the specific branch requirements starting from the top, beginning with Aviation, then Engineer, and finally, Functional Area 30. Once specific branch requirements are filled, we will fill the remaining at-large requirements, which are awarded solely based on an officer's position on the OML. Once again, starting from the top, we will fill five at-large requirements, skipping those officers who already filled the specific branch requirement. You will see that even though Major Ethan Smith at OML position 6 scored higher on the OML, he is not best qualified to meet the needs of the Army due to branch requirements, and therefore will not be recommended for promotion. We are now ready to move on to the fourth and final phase, which is show cause. In accordance with Army regulation, boards can recommend an officer to show cause for a number of reasons, including substandard performance, misconduct, dereliction, and or actions that threaten national security. Only one show cause recommendation is required to begin the process. 
Officers who receive a show cause recommendation will be reconsidered by the board for a simple yes or no vote. If a majority of the board members vote yes, meaning they recommend show cause, the recommendation is forwarded to the Commanding General of HRC for further action. In addition to Department of the Army Selection Boards, show cause action can be initiated by the Commanding General of HRC or by an officer's chain of command. Now let's take a look at a boardroom. This is a photo of an actual boardroom. The board president's voting station is at the front of the room. Each board member has an individual voting station with two monitors. Access to the boardroom is strictly monitored and visitors are prohibited from entering. Now let's take a look at what is displayed on those monitors. Board members review and score board files using an automated system called the Army Selection Board System, or ASBS. Each board member has two monitors. On one monitor, the entire board file for an officer is displayed. The other monitor displays the officer record brief. This allows board members to reference the officer record brief while they review the other contents of the board file. Now that you have an idea as to what a selection board is and what information board members consider, it's time to highlight what you can do to prepare for your next board. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important slide of this training. It is critical you take the time to ensure your board file is accurate and current. Think of your board file as your resume for a job or a promotion. Preparing for a selection board can be overwhelming. However, a useful resource to assist you is the board preparation checklist posted on the HRC website. It includes the following steps. One of the most important steps is to read the MILPR message that announces the board. The MILPR message is published between 90 and 120 days prior to the board and provides valuable information and dates that are key to your preparation, including specific eligibility criteria, the My Board file open and close dates, evaluation and photo deadlines, and any additional instructions that may pertain to the board. About 60 days prior to the board, the My Board file system will notify you via email that your board file is available to review, correct, and certify. Once the My Board file opens, you'll want to take a look at your file. We recommend you take a new DA photo in ASUs and ensure your officer record brief, DA photo, and IPERMS match. You can submit missing IPERMS documents through your Unit S1. Remind them to include the word board when submitting documents. HRC prioritizes documents received and will expedite processing for board-related documents. Finally, certify your board file, but know that it will still update if documents such as an evaluation or award are posted to your official record prior to the board convene date. Lastly, from our experience, we recommend limiting letters to the board president to address unusual circumstances only. The next few slides will focus on the DA photo. Although a DA photo is valid within five years of the board's convene date, a new DA photo is required if you receive an award of Army Commendation Medal or higher. Additionally, although the Class A uniform is still authorized until September 2015, it is strongly recommended that you take a DA photo in the Army Service uniform. Please make necessary alterations to ensure your uniform fits properly, and only wear awards and decorations that are authorized. It is a good idea to ask someone knowledgeable to inspect your uniform while you are wearing it to ensure it is correct. While at the photo facility, review the photo after it is taken. Don't be afraid to ask for another photo if it is unclear or dark. Get another photo before accepting it in that mess. We also recommend taking a new DA photo if you're going before a board and once you get promoted so you have a photo on file in your current rank. The next few slides will identify common DA photo errors. We will also see some examples of correct photos. Some common DA photo errors include baggy or tight uniforms, incorrect spacing of badges, insignia, nameplates, rank, and ribbons, U.S. and branch insignia reversed, incorrect ribbons, ribbons that are upside down or entire ribbon racks upside down, excessive badges from specific groups, and distinctive items not authorized for wear in a DA photo. We also notice many photos where officers wear unit awards not authorized for individual wear. If you can dream of a bad photo, we've seen it. Refer to AR and DAPAM 670-1 to check regulatory guidelines and have someone check your uniform while you're wearing it or at the photo facility. The DA photo is important. If someone tells you otherwise, don't believe them. A good photo is expected. Take the time to take a good photo. The next few slides depict correct and incorrect photos. Learn from these slides and don't be the officer that is an example of an incorrect or bad photo. Also, please note that in this training the photos are cropped, but the board will see the entire DA photo. The gentleman in this photo is missing all insignia, identification and skill badges, rank and awards. This is clearly not in accordance with AR and DAPAM 
This would have been a good photo in the past, but updates to AR and DAPAM 670-1 put a limit to the number of badges from specific groups. Therefore, this photo is not in accordance with regulation. The lesson here is to be aware of the regulatory changes and update your photo accordingly. Board members notice correct and incorrect photos. Pay attention to spacing between badges and badge placement. Also, notice how your weight appears in uniform. Board members cross-reference the weight appeared in the photo with what the board file reflects. Be aware of inconsistencies and take appropriate action to correct. This is an example of a correct photo. Ribbons are aligned and straight. The uniform fits properly. This is another correct photo. Just remember, your photo is the board's first impression of you. Make it a positive impression. Next, we'll take a look at the officer record brief. Take the time to update your officer record brief before your My Board file closes. Some areas to focus on are ensuring the awards and decorations portion is up to date. The information in this section should match your DA photo and your official record. Ensure duty titles under assignment information are current. Titles such as incoming personnel, known loss, and over strength, excess, or surplus personnel should be changed. The duty title should reflect the actual position for that assignment. You should also address height and weight discrepancies that occur between your ORB and evaluation reports. Ensure your overseas assignments and deployment data are up to date. And ensure your military and civilian education sections are current with no missing courses. You should also review your security clearance date, component, and physical information to ensure they are correct. There are several portions of the officer record brief that are masked to board members, including dwell time, dependent data, marital status, and religious preference information. In our experience, when reviewing an officer record brief, board members often focus on assignment history to assess professional development, military and civilian education level completed, and the remarks section that may indicate CSL or professional certification information. Now that you're familiar with the photo and officer record brief, let's discuss the importance of evaluations. The main purpose of the officer evaluation system is to convey officers' performance and potential to Department of the Army selection boards. The rating chain must clearly communicate their assessment to the board. Board members routinely comment that raters and senior raters should clearly state what they want the board to know. Some recommendations for the rating chain are to use the narratives to amplify the box check. Additionally, the rating chain can use enumeration to amplify the narrative. These can help the rating official clearly express and highlight portions of the narration. Please avoid using repeated verbiage. Board members often notice when a rating official has used the copy and paste technique. Also, try to be concise, candid, and quantifiable, as this will help convey a clear message. The value of a well-written evaluation cannot be overstated, as board members often refer to the evaluation as the most important part of the board file. The next few slides will prepare you in assessing the mock board files. Take note of the varying degrees of evaluations that you will review and decide how they will affect your vote. Based upon post-board surveys and statistical analysis, we believe board members focus on the following portions of the evaluation, but not necessarily in this order. The senior rater, rater, intermediate rater if applicable, and administrative portions of the evaluation. Most notably, board members recognize if evaluations convey an exclusive assessment versus a strong or weak assessment. We will further define what this looks like on subsequent slides. Now let's take a closer look at the administrative portion of the evaluation. There are several parts of administrative data that may be useful to board members, such as the reason for submission, the number of rated months, the rating chain information, whether it is referred report, and the duty title and description. As a reminder, referred reports are evaluations that are provided to the rated officer for acknowledgement or comment prior to processing by Headquarters Department of the Army. A referred report is mandatory for entries of APFT or height weight failure, relief for cause evaluations, rater box checks of unsatisfactory or senior rater box checks of not qualified, or when a narrative contains derogatory information. The following slides will show examples of rater narratives. This is an example of an exclusive rater narrative. An exclusive rater narrative applies a hard number to the assessment which clearly conveys how the officer stands amongst his or her peers. Notice the enumeration in the comments portion of the evaluation. Also, please take a moment to read the definition of excels. Exclusive narratives should be used to delineate your best or top performers. 
as the Excel's definition describes. This is an example of a proficient assessment. This is also an example of a strong narrative. Notice the absence of exclusive enumeration in the comments portion. Please take the time to read the definition of proficient. This is an example of a capable assessment. The capable box check provides an option to assess average to mediocre performance. Some might perceive this as a weak narrative. Please notice the lack of enumeration or quantification in the comments portion. Please read the definition of capable. This is an example of the Raiders Headquarters DA label. The profile is calculated when the Raider locks the assessment and the label applied when the evaluation is received at Headquarters DA. All of this information provides the board with critical insight into how an officer compares to their peers. The next few slides provide examples of Senior Raider narratives. Like the Raider, the Senior Raider can also use exclusive comments and enumeration to clearly depict the top most exceptional performers as depicted in this example. Notice the number one major of the 27 comment. This is an excellent example of exclusive enumeration. The board can easily discern how this officer compares against his or her peers. Narratives like this are recommended only for the best. Please know that not everyone can be number one or have strong BZ potential. Narratives such as this should be used to amplify a most qualified report or a report where an immature profile exists. We will define an immature profile in subsequent slides. Let's take a look at a highly qualified or strong narrative. In this example, the Senior Raider's narrative identifies this officer as having strong potential for promotion with peers. This is an example of a weak narrative. As you can see in these examples, the effective use of enumeration and quantitative language, or the lack thereof, sends a very clear message to the board. Now let's take a look at the Senior Raider Headquarters DA label. The Headquarters DA label was specifically designed to assist selection board members to quickly identify the rated officer and senior rater's information and profile size. Any profile size of 5 or less is considered an immature profile. You should expect a rating of anything other than most qualified with an immature profile. This is when the narrative is so important as an exclusive narrative can portray a most qualified officer despite a highly qualified box check. The next two slides indicate anomalies you should be aware of. This situation shows two reports for the same officer and the same senior rater. The report at the top reflects a most qualified report. The bottom reflects a highly qualified report. You might think that this is a downturn in performance, but if you look closely at the narrative and the headquarters DA labels, it is clearly not a downturn in performance. The senior rater is merely limited in his ability to render a most qualified report. This situation shows two reports for the same officer by different senior raters. The narratives reflect consistent performance. The headquarters DA label for the second senior rater reflects an immature profile. The second eval reads more like a most qualified report and is likely interpreted by the board as a most qualified report. Keep in mind, different senior raters have different rating philosophies. Board members know this. Board members are senior raters themselves and understand the limitations of immature profiles. Do not underestimate the power of the narrative. Now that we've discussed the board process, it's time to put what you've learned into practice. If you have a facilitator, please pause the video now and address any questions or comments you may have to them. If you do not have a facilitator, please address any questions you may have to your Unit S1. Next is the hands-on portion of the training, which is the mock board. You will have the opportunity to review, assess, and score six officers being considered for promotion. Resume the video when you are ready to begin. You are about to review and score files as if you were a board member. The officers you will review are under consideration for promotion to lieutenant colonel, although it is important to note that the board files are fictitious. The photos and officer record briefs are real, however, the evaluations associated with the officers are not real. You will see disconnects between the officer record briefs and the evaluations. This is for training purposes only. Also, note that for each mock officer there are three evaluations for review, however, 
an actual board has all of an officer's evaluations available. This is the word picture you will use to assess and score the subsequent mock board files. You will have to form your own voter philosophy, which is deciding what you think constitutes a 6 plus, 6, 6 minus, all the way down to a score of 1. Remember to judge an officer's file based on its content and not in comparison to what you might have noticed in another officer's file. Also, note that in this word picture, the fully qualified line is drawn between 2 and 3. Therefore, if you give an officer a score of 2, you are recommending they not be selected for promotion regardless of promotion opportunity. As you review each officer's file, please record a score between 1 and 6 plus or minus for each file. Pause the video if you require more time to review. The MOI, word picture, and score sheet can be downloaded from the HRC website and printed for your reference while reviewing these files. Now let's get started with our first officer. This is Officer 1.
Using the word picture of 1 through 6 plus, how would you score officer number 1? This is officer number 2.
Using the word picture of 1 through 6 plus, how would you score officer number 2? This is officer number 3.
Using the word picture of 1 through 6 plus, how would you score officer number 3? This is officer number 4.
Using the word picture of 1 through 6 plus, how would you score officer number 4? This is officer number 5.
Using the word picture of 1 through 6 plus, how would you score officer number 5? This is officer number 6.
Using the word picture of 1 through 6 plus, how would you score officer number 6? Now it's time to add up all the scores for each officer. If there is a large group of you taking this training, you can use a scoring card like this to capture your scores. Once all members have scored a file, the ASBS software automatically totals the scores for each officer and a subsequent OML. The highest scoring officer will be listed at OML position 1, all the way down to the lowest scoring officer. Remember, the pluses and minuses will cancel each other out. So, if an officer has the following scores, 6, 6 plus, 6 minus, 6, 6 minus, and 6, the officer's overall score is 36 minus 1. In this example, the 1 plus canceled out one of the minuses, which leaves a remaining minus. We depict this as minus 1. Pause the video now and take the time to total your scores. Once you've added up the scores for all the officers and everyone voting, list the scores in OML order and you can see the results. When you're ready, resume the video to see an example score sheet. This is an example score sheet. Please remember there are no wrong answers. As long as you were consistent and voted each officer's file without prejudice or partiality, your score is right. The final order of merit list is used to fill the requirements based on the needs of the Army as reflected in the Memorandum of Instruction. What does your final OML look like? In summary, this training covered what a DA selection board is, types of selection boards, and how they work. We also discussed what you can do to prepare for your next board and the importance of evaluations. Finally, you had the opportunity to vote in mock files as if you were serving as a board member. This concludes the mock board training. We hope you learned something about the officer promotion system. Now if you don't know, go find out when your next board is and prepare your My Board file. If you have any remaining questions, please check out our websites. Thank you for your attention.